Cell phones were a lifeline for students during the Parkland school shooting, calling 911 and texting their parents. Yeah, in fact, the first person to alert 911 was a student calling on their cell phone. But here in our area, many schools have spotty service. In some places, they have little or no cell coverage. Earlier this year, the CBS 12 News I team uncovered dozens of local schools with dead zones. Now, most local districts are taking action to ensure vital seconds aren't lost in an emergency. But our largest school district, well, they're not one of them. I team's Danielle Wall has that story. 911, what is your emergency? Hi, my daughter just uh, texted me from school. She says there's an active shooter. More than a year later, the 911 calls are still hard to hear. Oh my God. Oh my God. But they are an important part of the Parkland shooting story. Okay. She's been texting me. They are in um, the JROTC room. And she said the active shooter is on their floor. While sheriff's deputies were struggling to communicate with their radios, students were getting the word out on their cell phones, texting and telling their parents what was happening and where to send help. Are you able to text him? Yeah. Okay. Can you text him and get that information from him? 231. Room 231. The third floor, building 1200. We have injuries on the third floor. My wife's a teacher there. After listening to these 911 calls, the CBS 12 News I team looked into whether students in our schools would be able to call for help in the same way. The answer wasn't good. Like certain areas, like say down the hall towards the end of the building is really bad. One student at Suncoast High told us he couldn't get a signal when he needed it. One friend of mine, he was hurt and I couldn't help him because I didn't have good reception. And that wasn't an isolated situation. Middle schools and high schools in Palm Beach County and up the Treasure Coast have significant dead zones in and around campus. Of course, it depends on the carrier and the phone, but many calls are lost because of hurricane proof construction. Cell phone signals are often no match for these thick concrete walls. Now, since our story aired, many school districts have been taking action. It is a very big project. Martin County is installing Wi-Fi access points like these in every school. The district's technology director, Paul McGinnis, says it's a project that will cost more than a million dollars. We are aware that there are spots in the school like stairwells, etc., where coverage is not available right now. While the program was initially intended to make sure classroom computers and other devices worked better, the security issue is also top of mind. It's critical. Um, you know, where the, our first and foremost priority is, you know, obviously safety. Okeechobee County says they're also spending thousands of dollars to add Wi-Fi access points this year. St. Lucie County already put in Wi-Fi boosters and cell phone repeaters. They tell us this year the district is investing nearly $100,000 on these bi-directional amplifiers to improve radio communications for first responders. That's an upgrade based on the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Safety Commission recommendations. But these two districts, Palm Beach County, and Indian River County view the issue of cell phone access differently. Both districts expressly explain they do not want students on their phones in an emergency. Palm Beach County School Board Chairman Frank Barberi. The idea is to make the children invisible in an active shooter situation. We don't want anybody to hear them. We don't want phones ringing. Palm Beach schools told CBS 12 News they want students focused on directions from staff. And since high schools are built as hurricane shelters, they admit cell service can be problematic. Because that has been one of the issues. Uh, even our police officers, when they're in the schools, they, they, their radios don't work in certain areas. All the same, they say district staff will let parents know what's happening, not the kids. Indian River County Schools policy is essentially identical. Their written statement to us said it also helps avoid confusion in a crisis, saying in part, when students call, text, or post to social media during an emergency event, chances are they don't know the accurate details of the event taking place and could endanger themselves or others by communicating with their personal phones. Communications in critical incidents is usually the number one point of failure and challenge. Security consultant Ken Trump works with schools around the nation. He acknowledges talking on a phone during an active shooter incident could pose some risk, but he argues those connections can be critical to getting information out and resolving a dangerous situation. We do advise school administrators in those rare situations where they have dead zones, no phone, cell phone capability to look at what type of 
uh, repeaters or other enhancement tools they could use to put into the schools to have that capability. Because when seconds count. My granddaughter is texting me and she's okay. saying that there is a shooter and the police call 911. That one call or text could save lives. Danielle Law, CBS 12 News. All right, really makes you think.